He is the movie critic for NBC's Today Show and himself an entertaining and witty critic and commentator. Gene Shalit joins us this morning. The whole thing I discovered this morning is you. The what? Honestly. What? The whole business of why I would feel good and smiling when I came on today is having met you this morning. Because I haven't met you before. No, we've but never you, met. You have that uh, almost indefinable knack of making somebody feel at ease, welcome, and like you're on their side. And Thanks, it takes all Gene. the pressure off. Aren't you nice? It's Thank nice. you. I hear you're, uh, you're in town to audition for this station. Is that right? I am. I'm, I'm auditioning. I, I don't want to tell you whose job it is because <laughs> But I hope that you have something else to go to. <laughs> <laughs> See, he kisses you and then he kicks you. That's what he no, does. No, 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 no. <laughs> We've watched you for so long. And uh, if you're a fan of Gene Shalit, you're just 100%. But what was going on in your life before television? Magazines. I was uh, newspapers and magazines I worked on. And it's a, it's a very unusual thing happened. I was writing for Look Magazine. I was the movie critic for Look, and I had a column in the Ladies Home Journal. And I got a telephone call one morning from a vice president of NBC he says we have been reading your stuff do you write the way you talk I said yeah I talk the same way I write they said we're thinking of putting a movie critic on local television would you like to come over for an audition so I went over local was where local New York City yeah. and WNBC and I went in and the vice and I sat down and the vice president went <laughs> let's talk about radio <laughs> And that's how I got on. They put me on the radio because they couldn't put anybody who looks like this on television in those days. I was the forerunner of everybody ugly on television. Get you know? out of All here. All these guys with beards and mustaches. Nothing was like that. Everybody looked, you know, pure and sweet. But isn't it nice that you are your own person and you've never, no one's ever said change, Gene, or you can't be here. Or Not me, twice they haven't. Not twice. <laughs> how many times does uh, someone who's an executive with the network ever try to color your opinion? I, I don't assume it would it's fly never, with you. I want to tell you, it has never happened. I'll say that for NBC. Since the first day went on, when they really didn't know anything about me much except what I had written, they have never looked at a script of mine before I went on the air. Not once that's in 17 great. years. Boy, and that's I think nice. That's a great compliment to them, I think. To have that kind yeah. of freedom. I said to the president of NBC at the time, I said, you mean I can go out there on, te on network television and say anything I want? <laughs> he said, yes. Once. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my favorite part of you is when you laugh. I beg your pardon? I don't. <laughs> Let's talk about the doctor's bag. Get out. <laughs> You know, you're a lech. Look at you. What, is, what is this? What is this for? A lech is somebody who even makes a play for this beautiful woman in front of millions of people who are watching you. <laughs> I don't, that only I don't, means you I don't, don't lurk in quiet corners. <laughs> What's this? This is, I, I decided I did not want to be a yuppie many, 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 many years ago. And my old family doctor gave me his old family doctor <laughs> bag, which I carried for about 20 That's years. Great. And uh, then it finally wore out, and this is a new one. But <laughs> I, yeah, I would rather be an OBGYN than a <laughs> stockbroker. <laughs> You um you Tasty have a that busy. you huh? have a great <laughs> you have a great sense of humor. Congratulations on your son. Thank you. I'm a little late, but uh, <laughs> thanks, Gene. He probably was too, maybe. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was actually early. Right but time. we're not going to talk about that. You have a great sense of humor. Do you have to have a great sense of humor to do what you do, especially writing this incredible book? Well, this book, Laughing Matters, is a result of the fact that I have loved humor since I was really young. When I was in high school, I started to read and become aware of the good humor writers, and I love to laugh, but it's genetic. I have always. You know, I, I fall down laughing very easily. I love it when you, know? you do that. I yeah. mean, do you ever crack up to the point where you can't pull yourself together when you're doing something live? Yeah, I, I did that live with Carol Channing. I, uh, she made me laugh so hard that I, my eyeglasses fell off. I cried, and I, you know, I buried my face in her shoulder to try to hold on. She, she's great. Yeah, and once interviewing uh, Mel Brooks, but this was on tape. We had two cameras, and we were under control. And uh, he made me laugh so hard that I fell out of the chair and I was holding, I couldn't laugh. And he said, stop the cameras, I can't be interviewed by this idiot. He's nothing but laughing. And George Burns once said to me, will you stop laughing and listen? I read that, that's great. <laughs> you, you write about so many incredible people, but many fewer women than men. Is there a reason for that in terms of comedy? Where, where have women been? I don't know where women have been. Women have been home laughing a lot, but now that women are out of the house, they're starting to make other people laugh. Have you ever seen a woman out of the house? It really makes you laugh. <laughs> but I mean, there. There was one great woman writer in the 20s and 30s. Her name was Dorothy Parker. But now you have people like Fran Lebowitz. Yeah. You have uh, Roz Chest, who's a great cartoonist. You have Ver Veronica Gang. These women's names are not household names, but they write very, very, very funny stuff, and so I put them in a book. Also, now women have been liberated to the extent that they stand up comics. You see a lot of women. Of course, you have Joan Rivers, but you have lots of women now, young women who will eventually come up. Saturday Night Live gave young women a very good chance to prove that they could write good comedy just like men could write. What do you think of humor like Roseanne Barr's? 
I don't know Roseanne Barnes. It sounds like something before the television no, show. You no. check this out. <laughs> no, no, no Roseanne does a lot of housewife humor. You know, oh, she's she? a kind of heavy set and she's uh, like chews gum. And yeah, okay. Right. Well, when you meet her, you see if well, you like Well, Irma Bombeck is a national columnist who's very funny. That's right. Yeah, she is funny. Um, and it, Oprah's weight loss is very funny. <laughs> Why we, did she do that? I, I liked know. her the other way. You did? Yeah, not this way. You've lost weight. A little bit. You look great. I'm looking for it. You look, <laughs> E.B. and Catherine White right. wrote a compendium of American humor that's, be, that's been taught in every college for years. Right. A lot of people are saying that this picks up where that left off, or in fact, this is better. Well, this make you feel good? Better. That, that makes me feel good. E.B. White wrote the uh, sub-treasury of American humor in 1941. I think this is the best one since then. Because if you pick this book up and open to any page, you really will laugh. I, I, because there's not only text in there. There are cartoons, yeah. comic strips, vaudeville skits. The very first George Burns Gracie Allen skit is in here. Uh, you write, write about Gary Trudeau. Now, do you do that because of Jane? If I didn't put Gary Trudeau and Dewsbury in this book, and since he's married to Jane Pauley, yes. and since Jane sits next to me, and Jane has this big machete <laughs> under the desk, <laughs> For, for a I small lady, she right. wields a big machete. I put Doonesbury in here because I think Doonesbury is a brilliant comic strip. He is strip. brilliant, isn't he? Uh, not because of Jane. Uh, who has the better sense of humor, Jane or Bryant? Bryant. Really? Yeah. Bryant is a very, very good uh, storyteller. Jane is a very good listener to stories and, and appreciates them a lot. Although he sometimes tells her a story or two just to shock her. <laughs> but she's not shockable anymore. But Jane can tell stories too. But uh, I, I don't know what you mean by a sense of humor. And that's my fault that I don't know what you mean. As an as a anecdote person, Bryant is wonderful. Jane doesn't tell a lot of stories. But as an appreciator of humor, living with Gary Trudeau, she has she a great has sense to. of humor and understands it. We so, have some film clips because we wanted to show things that you, you gave thumbs up and thumbs down. The first one is Rain Man. You love this film, don't you? I like Rain Man very much. It stars Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise. And Dustin Hoffman plays an autistic individual who the average person meeting him would think was retarded. But he does have something very special, as many of those people do. He can do one thing brilliantly. They call him autistic savants. Like he could, somebody drops a pile of matches on the floor out of a box. He'll say there's 267 matches on the floor, and wow. he'll be right. One of those fellows, it's based on a real fellow who could walk down the street, and he'd look up at a building and says, 67 stories, 83 stories. Wow. It's like a lightning calculator. But on other levels of human intercourse, he can't, he can't function. Let's take it. Who do you respect as a reviewer? Gene, a Gene critic. Shallot. No, okay, but otherwise. That's really there... right. I don't think there's any critic that be that believes a word that any other critic says because you have to be so individualistic when you're a critic. Sometimes you'll read somebody else. I rarely do. But there's one critic in New York named Vincent Canby, oh. whose whose vision I share. But I read very little, and I have never seen these guys. Do they really do this, or do they just say in the edge, thumbs up? Thumbs I've never down. seen them either. No, I don't know. Those two guys, those twins. Do you have a good time doing what you do? Oh, I, oh, you have to. Because most people who are watching us today go see five, six, eight, ten movies a year, and they go to see the stuff that everybody talks about. I have to see the stuff that's the stuffing that they wouldn't want to see, <laughs> yeah. and I have to suffer through that. And I will never leave a movie before it's over, no matter how bad it is. And that's terrific, because a lot of people will. Yeah. You have wield enormous power no, in the industry. No, no power. No, no power. No. You wield power. The people who wield power is you go home and you tell your neighbor or some friend, you ought to see Melanie Griffith in Working Girl. Then they'll go. If I say it, some people go, some won't. The best card I ever got was from a guy who said, you're terrible. He said, everything you like, I hate. Everything you hate, <clears throat> I like. You are therefore the most reliable critic in America. Because if you like it, I don't go. <laughs> That's great. How did you do that? We watched you a half an hour ago interviewing Melody Griffith. Well, and the, the speed are. of light. I go into a telephone booth, I put on my other suit, I'm here. Look at this. Mark, you have to get a shot at it. Look at now I'm telling you, why does a film critic wear red suspenders? To be a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> Those are suspenders. To keep his hopes up. <laughs> you don't do anything in a small way. I beg your pardon? <laughs> You're not supposed to tell. Get out of here. It's my secret. This book is so much fun. And what do you, what do you got hanging on your chair? Folks, I don't know what you were watching before this came on, but this is what you should have Listen, been watching. Listen, Gene, this is what you should be wearing. Give me this. Hats off. There you hey, go. Hey, I was rooting for these guys <laughs> this year. I was really hoping that they would win. Boy, you look great in that hat. Changes your whole look. I can't go to my left. <laughs> 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 Laughing Matters, a celebration of, Ameri of American humor. This took you six years. Yeah, if you can find that in the Boston bookstore, I give you ten dollars. Why? Because it's the, sold out. It's pretty. I I, so, I was at uh, Newman Marcus on uh, Saturday. Out. My arm hurt. Don't yeah. say that. People won't go looking. Go I'll look bet for the book. It's around. And if you find one, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gene. Thank great you very to much. meet you. It's Thanks great a million. To see you. Thank you. Come back. Well, yeah, you love this town. So I'm come not back leaving. What do you mean, come back? <laughs>
You're interviewing John Williams tonight. I am. No, no, I'm going to be performing at Symphony Hall with the Boston Pops I'm going to do the night before Christmas. But then you're interviewing John, is that right? Yeah, Didn't I'm interviewing John for the Today Show because he's got a special on NBC, a different network coming up the end of the week. That's right. Oh, thanks a lot for being here, You're Jane. very liberal with, you these, take with care. these things. With yeah. these plugs. Yeah. Not bad, you got huh? a good contract, yeah, huh? Well, you paid me enough money before the show. <laughs> so I lent it to you. I want that back. <laughs>